Hi everyone, today we will understand the concept of autoencoder and simply implement it using TensorFlow 2. Let's get it started. Previously, we learned node and dense layer. And if you already know dense layer, you are ready to understand autoencoder. If you don't know or forgot what is dense layer, it is okay, let me recap it very quickly. A node is just like what you are seeing now. When there is an input, a node multiplies the input with its weight and add its bias, then send this wx plus b value to its activation function, which is sigmoid function here, and finally returns the output of this activation function. A dense layer is a set of nodes. When input comes, the input parallelly goes to all nodes in this dense layer. Here we can have a dense layer with three nodes. Uh, since there are three nodes, the output of this dense layer will have three numbers. So we can say the output of this dense layer is three dimensional vector. No matter which dimension the input was, a dense layer changed the input dimension into developer's desired uh, dimension. And this is all we need for autoencoder. Now you can see the basic design of autoencoder. As you can see, it is just a fully connected dense layer. Normally, autoencoder decreases dimensionality, then increases the dimensionality to the original dimension again. Why the autoencoder has this kind of design? You will get to know before end of this video. First of all, from the input to the last decreasing dense layer is encoder of autoencoder. You can think the encoder is where the original input is encoded to the dense vector. Let me use a digit image as example for better understanding of the first layer. When we have a closer look at this digit image, it is just five row and five column matrix as you can see from this slide, while the first input dense layer is a set of nodes. In order to input this image, we can reshape those pixels as one line like this slide, and we can make the first dense layer with the same number of pixels of the input image, so it, uh, each node represents each pixels of the image. Here now, you can see each node in the first dense layer represents each pixel. The example image is in the grayscale in range 0 to 255, where the 0 is the most dark black and the 255 is the most bright white color. You can see the first node has 0 value, since the first pixel is the most black color, while the second node has 5 as its value, since the second pixel is a little bit brighter than the first pixel. The third node has 200 as its value, since it is almost a uh, white color. You can have multiple dense layers in the encoder, but importantly, after the encoder, uh, we, can have, we have the most dense vector at the middle of the autoencoder, which is considered as latent vector of image uh, of the input vector, which I highlighted with yellow color here. You can define how many nodes in this latent vector, and I gave just two nodes so I can visualize the original digit latent vector in 2D plot. For example, if the latent vector, for example, was like a 1,2, we can plot like right hand side plot here. We also can plot other images like this, and like this, and like this. Uh, if, uh, if you train the autoencoder well, you will see same numbers will cluster together, and I will show you the real cluster at the end of this video, which is from our TensorFlow to, uh, to code. The last part of the autoencoder is the decoder part. The decoder can have multiple dense layers, but most importantly, the decoder increases the dimensionality of the latent vector to the original input's di uh, dimensionality. The objective function of the autoencoder is to minimize the difference between the decoded in vector and the original input. In other words, the objective is to reconstruct the original ima image at the end of the decoder. I will show you now TensorFlow 2 code for implementing autoencoder and visualization of the MNIST data distribution and the reconstructed image. Here you go. You can easily download MNIST data using tf.keras.dataset.mnist API. Then you can see I reshaped the image from this code. 
since MNIST is 288 row and the 28 column image, I reshape it to the 784, which is, which is 28 by 28, so I can use this as input to the first dense layer. Normalizing data is always a good habit for making training efficient. Since grayscale range is 0 to 255, we just divide its value by 255. And here is the encoder code. Input dense layer text 784, which is a pixel count of MNIST image, and it has 128 nodes in it. The second dense layer of encoder takes this 128 output as its input and outputs three dimensional vectors so we can visualize the latent vector in the 3D plot. The decoder has two dense layers in this practice. It just reconstructs the original input dimensionality, just reverses the order of encoder dense layer. Now it is time to train. We define autoencoder from the input to the last decoder, dense layer, and the set optimizer as Adam loss function as cross entropy. Importantly, I use Xtrain as label for Xtrain since my objective here is to minimize the difference between the decoder's output to the original input so the last decoder's layer's output is just reconstructing the original input. We also want to plot latent vector. In order to get the latent vector, let's define the encoder as TensorFlow model using this code, so we can get the output of the encoder. Now we can get the latent vector by getting encoder's predict API. Since now we have the three-dimensional vector from the latent vector, we can easily plot using this code. You can verify same numbers are clustered in 3D chart after running this code. And you also can visualize reconstructed image. Let's have TensorFlow model on decoder by running this code. Now we can get the reconstructed image by running decoder's predict API. And by running this code, now you can compare original input MNIST with your autoencoder's reconstructed image. All right. I wish this video helped you to understand autoencoder and helped implementing it using TensorFlow too. My implementation is always in my GitHub and you can practice easily using Collab link there. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.